if you look at newspapers or general discussions, you will reach the conclusion that democracy is a big hindrance for economic growth. What I'm going to argue is that democracy is actually a contributor to economic growth. With all of its faults, democracy is still a much better conduit for economic growth than non-democratic institutions. Now, of course, this doesn't say that when you take a specific instance, you know, European Union or Britain or Russia, that when you go from non-democracy to democracy or the other way around, we know exactly what's going to happen. But the tendency from looking at over 150 countries for over, 100 and, uh, over 40 years is that countries that democratize increase their GDP per capita by about 20-25% in the next 25 years. So that's not a trivial amount. It's certainly not going to close the gap between the Netherlands and, uh, uh, and the, Bel uh, the, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. But it is a very significant gain from economic growth. And the reason we find is that non-democratic institutions create many more distortions, both in the economic front and also politically. And they tend to underinvest in their citizens in such things as health, infrastructure, and education. So democracy is by no means perfect. It has faults, and I think we have to think about how to work with the democratic institutions we have. But also it's high time that we sort of understand that democracy, not just for human welfare and the values that we have, but also for economic outcomes is actually a pretty good system relative to alternatives. So I think looking at a specific country as a function of their current government is not going to be a good indication of what are the well-functioning institutions. But we certainly know that the United States has been having problems with its democracy because of excessive gridlock. And uh, there has been a resurgence of uh, different types of populist fervor in all, all sorts of countries in the Europe and in the United States. Some of that is just fair game in democratic decision making, but I think some of it does reflect this gridlock and the inability of uh, the people to sort of have their voices heard through the democratic institutions. That's always hard in a large country like the United States. It has become much larger because of this political gridlock and quite honestly the increased disconnect between the regular people and the political system that has become much more dependent on money and much more dependent on lobbying, much more dependent on campaign contributions. In the United, in the Europe, it's become the same sort of uh, problematic case for a different reason, because now a lot of the decisions are transferred to the European Union, and I think the regular voter doesn't feel that he or she has as much say in the European decision-making process. Yes, there's the European Parliament, but that's not viewed as a powerful uh, decision-making body. But, you know, if you sort of look at sort of Canada, for instance, uh, it's a very good example of a democratic system that has never veered away from democracy. It has had better leaders, it has had worse leaders, but generally both the democratic norms have been followed, democratic institutions have never been sort of threatened, and you can see the sort of the outcome that when a, a given set of leaders or a given party does not perform well, you replace them and that brings new blood, new energy into the economic and the political arena.